white horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Go, oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Colonel Hazen, Commandant of Fort Davis, was greatly concerned by the brazen and ruthless raids of Chief Big Eagle and his band of renegade Apaches. Efforts to run down the Apache Braves or to arrange a powwow with Chief Big Eagle had been useless. One afternoon, the colonel was discussing the situation with Lieutenant Vale. Lieutenant, Chief Big Eagle and his savage renegades must be stopped at any cost. Their killing and plundering have aroused protests even from Washington. I know, sir. <laughs> the top command in Washington wanted to know why we can't put an end to those raids. Why we can't destroy Chief Big Eagle and his band. Of course, back there in Washington, they don't realize what we're up against. With only 50 troopers, we don't dare move against about 200 savages. Even though we know where they're camped. Chief Big Eagle is sly and intelligent, Colonel. He seems to know every move we make at the fort. Yes, I realize that, but I can't figure it out. Doesn't seem possible anyone here would be traitor. I enough. feel that way about it, too, sir. But it stands to reason someone who has access to the fort is spying for that Apache chief. Well, I finally ask for reinforcements. We might try to eliminate the chief and his followers. The reply to my request was this dispatch from the high command. It came this morning. Ah. We suggest it will be more desirable to make a peace treaty with Chief Big Eagle. Since such a treaty might influence many other tribes still unfriendly to our occupation in the far west. What do you think of that? Well, I'm certain they don't realize the situation, sir. In my opinion, those Apaches should be shot down, and the sooner the better. Yes, well, our opinions don't count in the matter. Suggestion that dispatch is really a command. Yes, I know, sir. I've already sent two groups carrying flags of truce on peace missions to Big Eagle. But as you well know, both groups were ambushed before they reached the Apache village. We've lost six men trying to plan a powwow with Chief Big Eagle. And yet, according to that dispatch, we're supposed to... Come in. Oh, yes, what is it, Sergeant? Luno, the Indian scout, is here, sir. He says he brings an important message to Chief Big Eagle. Oh, well, bring Luno here at once, Sergeant. Yes. Colonel, we'll see you now, Luno. What do you make of it, sir? It may be the break we need, Lieutenant. Here comes Luno. All righty. Yeah. Ow. You've come from Chief Big Eagle, Luno? That's right. 
Up to now, you haven't been able to talk to the chief, even though you've had access to his village. Me at Apache Village this morning. Chief say him want talk to me. Go on. Me go chief's wigwam. Him say me come to fort. Tell white chief, bring officers to Indian village for powwow at sunrise, day after tomorrow. Did Big Eagle say why he wanted to talk to us? Him say him want talk of peace. Me bring belt of wampum from chief. Oh. This is an Apache chief's wampum, though. That proves Luno did talk to Big Eagle. Huh. Chief Big Eagle say me come back with answer. Very well. Tell the chief I'll bring my officers to his village for the powwow as he requests. Ah, me tell Big Eagle. Me go Apache's village now. Ah, Colonel Hayes and Chief Big Eagle has cut us. That powwow may be a trap, sir. We'll be on our guard and take the chance, Lieutenant. This is our opportunity to carry out the order from Washington. Try to make a peace treaty with Big Eagle. His Indian companion, Toto, moved leisurely along the trail between the Apache's village and the fort. Do not say why we come this way, Kimasabi. We've come here, Toto, to offer our help in subduing Chief Big Eagle and his savage renegades. Colonel Hazen sent word to the Padre that he had lost several men, greatly concerned about the Apache raids in this territory. Then we go straight to fort? No, oh, we'll make camp first, and before I go to see the Colonel... I want to figure out some plan of action that might be of help. Well, that's a good idea. After we find the campsite, we'll ride over toward the Indian village and see how they're situated. Drastic action must be taken against Big Eagle and his braves before they go on the rampage again. Come on, Billy. Come, Scout. Darkness had fallen and a bright moon was shining when the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had located a campsite, finally set out toward the Indian village. Later, they stopped among the trees on a bluff which overlooked the village. The moon's right. They're called the edge of the bluff. Ah, it'd be easy to see. The masked man and the Indian cautiously moved toward the edge of the bluff, first stooping, then crawling, so as not to be seen from below. Finally, they were looking down upon the village. Indian coming to camp. My valley trail. Yes, he stopped near the big campfire. Ah. One may think of way him dressed, him scout for army kings. I think that's possible. Look, he's come from Wigwam. Them talk together. That must be Chief Big Eagle. That's right. Now, Chief, talk to Braves. Well, he think it good news. Indian bring to Chief. I'd like to know what news he brought. Ah. Indian mount now. Get ready to leave. Let's get to the horses, Toto. Ah. Hurry. And what we do now? Follow that in. We'll see where he goes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Mount Silver. Get him up to count. The Lone Ranger and Toto left the bluff, and a short time later reached the valley trail. The fresh tracks of the rider who had left the village were easily followed. An Indian was taking the trail that leads to Fort Davis. Uh-huh. We'll slow our pace before we go around that turn ahead. I don't want to get too close to him. Easy, Silver, easy, boy. Very scout. Very As they started around the bend in the trail, Tato suddenly called a halt. Wait, Kimasabi. Who's the Oh, scout. Oh, oh. oh. In turn off. On the branch trail. He not look back. Yes, that branch trail leads into a small basin just a short distance from the main trail. Ah. I'm out of sight now. If we continue to follow him, we'll have to use caution. Come on, Silver. Come, Scott. Come, Father. Riding slowly, the masked man and Toto turned onto the branch trail behind the Indian they were following. Within a short time, they neared the small basin the Lone Ranger had mentioned and pulled rain. Now, we'll leave the horses here in the wood while we go on foot to the rim overlooking the basin. Come on. The two men moved quietly through the trees and brush until they neared the rim. Then they crouched down and crawled to the edge. 
several Indians camped there. Ah. Uh, Kim Sabe. Yeah. Them unloading rifles from pack horse. The light of the campfire there shows them to be Apaches. Ah. Uh, maybe them big eagle braves. I'd like to know the reason they're there. I wonder if... Do they... not move them or me kill. The scout we followed. Ah, uh, he's behind us. You stand up. Turn around. Do as he says, Tom. Uh-huh. It good me catch outlaws. You may be playing steal Indian rifles. We're not outlaws. We not here steal rifles. Me take outlaw spies to Apaches. Them soon torture troops from you. Now, you go down path that lead into camp of Apache braves. For a moment, the Lone Ranger stood motionless before the glaring Luno in the bright moonlight. Then, with a meaningful smile, he gazed beyond the Indian. Then he spoke. You might as well drop your gun. You look behind you, you'll see why. Momentarily startled, Luno Wait. quickly glanced yeah. around. It was then the masked man moved fast. I'll take that gun. You're not taking it. This says I shall. Oh. Oh. You move plenty fast, Kimasabi. You still wonder what happened. He fell for an old trick. Let's get to the horses. Uh. Take heavy blow on Shin. Not hard enough. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. We'll call to other Indians. We get the horses quick. Easy, easy, easy scout, easy, fella. Get them up. Oh. Almost an hour had passed before the Lone Ranger and Tonto were sure the Apaches had given up the chase. The masked man and Indians stopped their horses to rest some miles from their camp. Oh, you oh, oh, very big oh, uh, oh. And it seemed like there, there were ten, maybe twelve Apache, Kimasabi. Be sure they're not follow now. I'm wondering why those Indians are camped in that basin near the trail between the fort and the village. Well, maybe them scouting party. Make sure troopers not get to Apache village. Well, that's possible. Uh, what we do now, Kimasabi? They go to our camp. Then at dawn, I'll ride to the fort to have a talk with Colonel Hazen. Uh, that's a good idea. All right, let's go. Come on, Come on, scout. It was just after dawn when Colonel Hazen and Lieutenant Bale approached the Commandant's office to find the sergeant waiting. Good morning, sir. Luno has arrived and is waiting to see you. Says he brings important information. Very well, Sergeant. Bring Luno here at once. Yes. Sir. <laughs> I wonder if Chief Big Eagle has changed his mind about that peace power, Colonel. You know? I'm wondering the same thing, Lieutenant. You know, soon know. Come in. Here's Luno, sir. Oh, come in, Luno. Huh? Well, Luno, what brings you here so early? Has Chief Big Eagle called off the powwow? Him still want powwow. Me not come about that. Well, what then? Me come tell the outlaws who try sell rifles to Apaches. Hmm. I suspected there were gun runners helping Big Eagle to arm. No. Big Eagle not buy rifles. This first time them come Apache village. I see. Go on. Masked outlaw and Indian come to village with pack horse. Them have rifles. Want sell to Apaches. Big Eagle want peace now. Him tell Braves take outlaws prisoner. But them jump on horses, get away. Leave pack horse. That's hard to believe, Luno. It true. Big Eagle say me bring horse with rifles to White Chief here at Fort as proof. Him say, tell White Chief about outlaw. That indicates Chief Big Eagle really wants to make peace with his colonel. Yes. Lieutenant, go out with Ludo and check his story about bringing a pack horse with a load of rifles. Yes, sir. If it's true, send men out to search for those two gunrunners. Very well, Colonel. Ludo, return to Big Eagle's village and tell him we're convinced he does want peace. Tell him we'll meet at the powwow tomorrow as planned. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue. After Lieutenant Vale checked his story, Luno left for the Apache village. Later that morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode the trail that led to Fort Davis. I'll tell Colonel Hazen about the Apache band in the small basin so that he may take action against them. Mm, maybe it could. We tell Colonel. I've seen the Indian Army scout in the basin with Apaches. Of course. You want to question that scout? Okay, Miss Abbey. Yes? You see big dust cloud along trail. Many riders coming. Hmm. I think they're troopers from the fort. Well, if not good, you meet them wearing masks. Well, they're sure to question the mask. But I'll tell them to take them to Colonel Hayes and let him do any necessary explaining. They see us by this time, so there's no use to... And then shoot at us. Quick, turn in the woods. More silver. Come on. The Lone Ranger and Toto had turned quickly to one side and had ridden in among the trees. They came to a gully which they entered and followed back along the trail in the direction from which they had come. For some time, the two men maneuvered to outdistance and lose the troopers. Finally, they succeeded. And once more, the masked man and Indian stopped to rest their horses after a long chase. Oh, 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 I, oh, I didn't expect those troopers to start shooting at us. I thought they'd just stop us for questioning. Ah, it's plenty strange. And their reaction when they saw us, it struck me that they were actually out searching for us. Isn't that right? I'll not take a chance of approaching the fort wearing my mask, Tonto. We go back to our camp and I'll disguise my features so that I can go without the mask. One, two, three. Oh, oh. When the masked man and Indian reached camp, the Lone Ranger removed his mask and carefully disguised his features. Then they rubbed clay on the horses. Later, they again set out for Fort Davis. Then, while Tonto waited in a grove a short distance away, the Lone Ranger rode alone to the entrance of the fort. Oh! Yes, sir. That's to be recognized. Easy, silly big fuck. Very well. Who are you? Why did you come here? I've come to see Colonel Hazen. I have important news about the Apaches. What is it, Corporal? Sergeant, this man wants to see the Colonel. Says he has important news about the Apaches. Well, in that case, I'll take him to the Colonel's headquarters. Have someone take care of his horse, Corporal. All right, Sergeant. Come with me, mister. I'll take you to the Colonel. The Sergeant took the Lone Ranger to the Commandant's office. A few minutes later, the visitor, with his features disguised, stood before the colonel's desk. I understand you have important information about the Indians, Mr. Uh, uh, call me Jones, Colonel. Sit down, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Something familiar about you. That voice. Uh, perhaps this will identify me, Colonel Hazen. A silver bullet. Why, you must be the Lone Ranger. I wrote to the Padre asking for your help. That's right. I tried to get to you earlier, but I was wearing my mask, and some of your men fired at Tonto and me before we could stop and explain. Hold on. Luno, an Indian who scouts for us, reported that a masked man and Indian tried to sell rifles to the Apaches. He brought in a pack horse loaded with rifles as proof. Chief Big Eagle sent him here early this morning. Oh, now I understand. Your Indian scout, Luno, lied, Colonel Hazen. Lied? Yes. Tonto and I managed to approach the Indian village last night without detection. We saw an Indian army scout come to the village. We followed him later to a hidden basin where there were about ten or twelve Apaches. They were unloading rifles from a pack horse. Mm, that's strange. We had word from Big Eagle that he's willing to meet me and my officers at his village at dawn tomorrow to talk peace. Luna was the go-between. I wondered why you haven't taken your troopers and attacked the Apaches since you know the location of their village. Well, we had only fifty troopers here at the fort, sir. I see, and Big Eagle has close to two hundred braves. Yes. Furthermore, we've had orders to try to make peace with Big Eagle. This is our chance. Mm. Colonel, it could be that the Apaches in that small basin between here and the Indian village are there for the purpose of intercepting you and your officers tomorrow. But Big Eagle requested the power. Big Eagle is treacherous. I believe Luno is, too. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I think he's planning with the Apache chief to trap you and your staff. But the pack horse with the rifles. Why would he... Luno had the drop on following me, but we managed to get away. I think he's clever enough to know that by reporting us as outlaws and bringing those rifles here, any doubts you might have about Big Eagle's intentions would be removed. I see. By thunder, I wish the higher-ups would be consistent. Oh, what do you mean? I asked for reinforcements. Instead, I received a dispatch suggesting that I make peace with the Apaches. Well... And yet only an hour ago, a hundred troopers arrived from Fort Stockton, north of here. Has that changed your mind about the powwow? Well, not exactly, 
I feel we should attend the powwow on the chance that Big Eagle really wants peace. I doubt it. Luno may have heard about that dispatch and told Big Eagle. That may have been the reason the chief requested a powwow, uh, knowing you'd accept. Mm, that's possible. But if, as you think, they are planning a trap... Do you think Luno knows about the arrival of reinforcements? No, oh, I doubt it. You know, we didn't expect them. Also, he left this morning to go to the Apache village south of here. Good. I suggest you and your staff attend the powwow at dawn, Colonel. I have a plan that should forestall any treachery on the part of Big Eagle. I'll uh, tell you my plan. Then we'll be ready for whatever happens tomorrow morning. After a careful discussion of the plan, the Lone Ranger left the fort and joined Tonto. The two men returned to their camp in the hills. Then Tonto left alone with a note to the Indian agent at a reservation several miles away where friendly Apaches were living. Some hours later, Tonto returned with Apache regalia, and the two men spent a long time working over their disguises. During the night, they rode from camp in the direction of the Apache village, which they hoped to enter as Apache braves. Yes, to be well, can't you get on? Monsieur, come up, scout. Dawn was breaking when Colonel Hazen and his officers arrived at the Apache village and dismounted before Chief Big Eagle's wigwam. Oh, oh, oh. No squaws or children were in sight, and the Apaches stood in groups nearby, watching intently. In a large circle around the campfire, a council group of blanketed Indians sat on the ground, waiting. Chief Big Eagle stood with arms folded inside a ceremonial blanket, and Luno, the army scout, stood beside him. Big Eagle and brave, welcome, white chief and soldier. Chief Big Eagle... We come in peace. Ah, that's good. But if white chief tell truth, then him tell soldiers take off gun belts, hang on saddles. I don't like this, Colonel. We must humor him, Lieutenant. Remove your gun belts, gentlemen. Hang them on your saddles. There's mine. Reluctantly, the officers took off their gun belts and hung them on their saddles. Then the colonel spoke to the chief. All right, Chief Big Eagle. You're unarmed, ready to join the council circle. Ooh, you leave horses there. Come to powwow. Come along, gentlemen. This is risky business. I know, but don't worry. Chief Big Eagle sat down in the circle, then motioned to the officers to do the same. As soon as they were seated, Luno walked to the center of the circle. White chief from fort and officers, now prisoners of Apache. Braves in council circle have guns under blankets. For a moment, the officers sat in stunned silence, gazing at the leering faces about them. Then two Apache braves, who were seemingly standing near the circle as interested spectators, suddenly went into action. One of them sprang behind the chief. The other moved to a position facing Luno. Both held guns. They were the Lone Ranger and Toto in disguise. I hold a gun at Big Eagle's back. If anyone moves, he'll die. Big Eagle, tell your council braves to drop their guns. Tell them... Otame, Otame. Colonel, you and your man get your gun belt. Gladly. Come on, men. Do not get away. All braves and village ready with guns. Look up on the rim of the cliff, Luno. A hundred troopers are there with rifles aimed down here at your village. We have our guns now. Good. Now, Big Eagle, tell the council braves to leave the circle and move far back. Mulatu Mello. Mulatu Mello. Chief Big Eagle, we're taking you and that traitor Luno with us to the fort. You will not take Luno. Be killed. No, you must cry. Stop. Colonel, are the rest of your men ready at the valley entrance? Yes. Give them the signal to move in before the rest of the braves decide to rush us. Right. Come on, troopers. Give it on. The braves of the village turn to make the attack of the oncoming troopers. 
For several minutes, the battle raged. Then, subdued by the troopers in the valley and those on the rim above, the Apaches gave up. The fight ended. Some of the troopers are entering the village. Your plan worked, my friend. Even I couldn't take you or Tato out in your disguise as Apaches. We'll take off this Apache regalia before some of the troopers think we're Apache braves. Uh, Apache not suspect us. Me get silver scout from work. I suppose it was fairly easy to come into the village under cover of darkness, but if any of them had spoken to you... Me, Lote, Mulingo, Apache. <laughs> I've learned to speak the Apache language. I see. Ho, ho, ho there. Ho, ho. Colonel... Catch that the Apaches who were waiting in the basin before they had a chance to intercept you and the others. Good work. We'll take Big Eagle and the traitor Luno to the fort with us. The rest of the tribe will be sent under guard to the reservation. Uh, here comes Toto with the horses. Horse gun. Horse gun. Oh. Apache not give us any more trouble. I'm certain of that. You and Toto played your parts well, my friend. But if I didn't know you and respect your judgment... I'd have hesitated about following your plan. Thanks for your faith in me, Colonel. Hot on our ride on now. But we'll stop by to see you again sometime. Goodbye, my friends. And many thanks. Adios, gentlemen. Easy, steady. Easy, Scout. Easy, easy, Come on, Scout. That man was mighty clever to walk with those Apaches, Colonel. Who is he, sir? <laughs> he and the Indian are the would be outlaws our men were hunting yesterday. They're both very clever, Lieutenant. The tall man usually wears a mask. Oh, I don't understand. He's one of the bravest Americans I know, Lieutenant. And as for being clever, why, even the chiefs of staff in Washington respect the wisdom and judgment of the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. A part of the Lone Ranger is.